What is up, my friends? Welcome to another Monday video here on CoolStuffInc.com. We're playing some modern today, and we have quite the quite the deck here. Um, of course, Winona, joiner of forces, uh, recently suspended in historic, um, not banned in standard, but nerfed by uh, the banning of Agent of Treachery. And uh, Winona's just really getting around these days, now making splashes in modern. Now, I played against a deck like this uh, on stream eh, maybe last week, and uh, we played against this deck, and we we're like, ooh, that was pretty cool. So I've reverse engineered the deck. I put it on stream a little bit. I've tuned up the sideboard, and um, we've just got a modern version of Winona, Joiner of Forces. So, of course, Angrath Marauders, a card that is legal and historic, but not in standard, uh, part of the reason why Winona got suspended in historic. Angrath Marauders is a seven mana human. It's a 4-4. Four, four. It says a source, if a source you control would deal damage, it deals double damage. So, of course, don't need to explain how fast this can end the game. Obviously, if this comes in attacking, and then uh, you know, you the creatures that are attacking for Rona anyway, doubling damage, and Lord help you or help your opponent if uh you get two of these because it doubles and then doubles again. I'm not very good at math, but it's a pretty big number. Pretty big number. So Angrath's Marauders is what we're going for here. Um, you could, in theory, play things like Asian of Treachery, but that card, that card is not nearly as impressive in modern as it is in, in standard. Standard's about, you know, having one big thing in play or having a lot of lands in play. And, you know, Agent, maybe you steal their Tron land for a turn. I don't know. You're more better off just trying to kill them in modern. So that's what we're building towards. There's a lot of really clever deck building here to make that work. Um, as a side note, I do think Winona is a terribly designed card. Um, it's really awesome. It's fun, but has the clear Aetherworks Marvel problem of, oops, I put in a nine drop. <laughs> the ability should clearly say you may put a human creature card, mana cost three or less from among them on the battlefield. So it, it contributes to the fun aspect of card, card advantage in combat, fun deck building without hamstringing Wizards of a Coast into not printing any good humans that cost, you know, big expensive humans coming forward. You know, thought they wanted to listen with Stoneforge Mystic. Not a lot of lessons being learned lately, but that's okay. Whatever. Doesn't matter. It is what it is. We're going to play with it. So a lot of really clever deck building here. Now, of course, our goal is to get Winona as early as often as possible. So you have Man Acceleration, Birds of Paradise, Lana or Elves, both not humans. Um, the real find here, though, is Eldric Evolution. A card that got a lot of hype. And didn't really live up to that hype super well. So you mana sorcery as an additional cost, sacrifice a creature. And you get to, to basically birthing pod or tutor your deck for a creature that costs up to two mana more than the sacrifice creature's costs. So sacrifice a two drop or a three drop, get Winona. Awesome. Now there's a lot of really clever stuff going on here that makes Eldritch Revolution super awesome. Stranger Rootgeist is a two woman haste and undying. So if you sacrifice the Geist to Evolution, it comes back as a 3-2 haste, ready to attack with Winona on the battlefield. Great. Wolves of Resurgence, similar, not as good. You get a token, but it can't attack immediately. Uh, Season Pyromancer is the card that holds the entire deck together. Uh, Season Pyromancer, 2-2 two, two for 3, comes into play, discard 2, draw 2. When you discard non-lands, you make 1-1 one, one elemental tokens, not humans. Uh, you can discard Angrath's Marauders that you draw and don't need. It's a human, um, so we can hit it off Winona in the scenarios where we don't hit Angrath's Marauders. It's like an extra hit. And of course, you can play it, make two tokens, untap, sacrifice it to Eldritch Evolution, and attack with those two tokens. So self-contained, basically everything that could possibly want. It is a non-human. It is humans. It is card filtering, card draw, a way to get Marauders out of your hand, a way to find Winona. It's just everything. Just one of the best cards in the deck, uh, bar none. Another clever addition here is Smuggler's Copter. Also not a human. Um, can loot away excess Angrath Marauders we don't need. And really cool is that if you have no creatures in play, but a Copter, when you play Winona, Winona can crew the Copter and then attack, which is really cool. So we got that. Um, Rab Master also here to make multiple attackers. Plus also plays great with Copter and also just kills your opponent pretty quick, honestly. It turned two Rab Masters pretty awesome. Um, again, all of our mana accelerators are not human, so they can help out with Monona later on. That's basically it. Real kind of straightforward deck here. Um, this deck's capable of a lot of turn three kills. Um, 
So it doesn't need too much interaction. We're playing a few bolts. You know, realistically, we're just looking to get him dead. And uh, the deck does a pretty good job of that. Uh, a lot of turn three kills so far in my playing with this deck. Cyborg is uh, is pretty cool and clever as well. So we have uh, humans and non-humans, right? So we have Avalanche Runners is the one that I love. Um, I just love this card. And playing against Tron, you can just hard cast it, of course. But also, if you win to them and you miss and don't hit Angrats Marauders, well, hopefully you hit an Avalanche Riders to slow them down, right? That's pretty cool. Thalia, similar idea, where if you're going for that turn 3 or turn 4 kill against the combo deck and you miss, well, you can just hit Thalia, and that'll buy you some time too. Good against Burn, good cast on turn 2, just a good card in general, obviously. A few non-humans here too. Uh, Gattactig, X1 card against combo, X1 card against, um, against Titan decks and Tron decks, things like that. It's not a human. Um, but you know, very, very, uh, very solid card. And in those matchups, voice doesn't really do too much. So pretty big upgrade there. Knight of Autumn is our anti hate card card, kills Graph Digger's Cage, things like that. While also being an anti burn card, uh, we can gain four life and so on and so forth. It's funny. I think it would actually be better if Knight was a human. So again, it could be one of those misses off Winona when you don't find Angrats Marauders, but you can find a card that's useful in the matchup, but Still really good either way. And then a few spells. Uh, rest in Peace, obviously, insanely getting Scraveyards. We don't use our Graveyard at all. Path to Exile, when you really got to kill stuff for a little extra removal. And then Choke for those filthy blue decks. You know, Mystic Sanctuary. You want to play a lot of Islands? We're going to punish you for it. So, deck is super fun, super cool, and super fast. Uh, I was very, very impressed with the speed of this deck and the resilience as well. So, let's go here. Winona, Angrats Marauders in Modern. But first... Quick word from our sponsors here at CoolStuffInc.com. CoolStuffInc.com now has their own branded sleeves. These sleek, matte finished sleeves will keep all standard size cards safe and protected. Get yours today at CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. All right, round one, round one. Of course, we've drawn all the Angrats Marauders into our opening hands. Perfect. Uh, all right, so we're going to Mulligan Sand. This is a pretty easy... Uh, and yeah, both these cards are, no, they're not like completely dead in our hand, but they're pretty dead. So we're going to mulligan here. Uh, we're also on the draw. So, all right. So uh, mulligan into three lands, voice, voice, pyromancer, birds. Uh, definitely going to keep this. Um, the question is, do we discard a land or a voice? We are on the draw. Um, obviously, knowing the matchup would help us a ton. You know, we don't want to flood and we want to discard spells to Pyromancer if possible. But if our, our birds gets bolted, we can't even cast Pyromancer. Things get pretty ugly. So I think we're going to play it safe here and just, just, just get rid of a voice. Um, you know, worst case scenario, Pyromancer has to discard a land and draw a card. That's fine too, I guess. Pyromancer is also really good when you mulligan because um, you discard the cards before you draw. So if, you're, if your hand is empty, you just draw two cards, which is awesome. So... Turn one, Forest Stirring, so probably, uh, no, it's just a, okay. PSA, my opponent kept seven cards. If you are playing Tron, you never keep your hand if you don't, if you aren't not close to Tron. And I couldn't imagine keeping a hand that has to go turn one Forest unless it was four cards or less, possibly even three. Uh, all you Tron players out there, please, even before the London Mulligan, you still Mulligan super aggressively. With the London Mulligan, you go bananas. Um, you should never, ever, ever play a non-Tron land on turn one when you're playing Tron. Period. End of story. Please Mulligan. All right. I mean, so this is great for us. Because um, it means they can't have Tron until at least turn four. So PSA for everyone. I've written articles about Tron. Go look them up. I talk about Mulliganing. Mulliganing with Tron is probably the most important part about playing the deck. And uh, that was a really good draw. So... Uh, Please be aware. Please. Pains me to see. Pains me to see. When you're a Tron opponent, keep seven. Either they know what they're doing and they have the Stone Cold Nuts, or they're unfamiliar with the deck and not mulliganing aggressively enough. All right, Storings again? Sure. So we have a turn three here. Um, hopefully we draw any spell. So we can discard voice and a spell. It's Pyromancer, and the next turn... Attack with one on it with uh, two triggers and a map, sure. 
Yes, yeah, really slow, Tron. Any spell, please. Did it. Perfect. All right, so uh, we're just going to get our white source now, I guess. We'll just go get a uh, Temple Garden. And Shock. Play Pyromancer. Discard two. Discard Voice and Geist. Draw a land, whatever. Sure, it's fine. And then the best possible draw would actually be Eldritch Evolution. So we could sacrifice the Pyromancer and attack with three creatures, including the birds. But attacking with Winona and, you know, for two elementals is pretty good. Especially given the fact that they won't have Tron for two more turns. I guess one more turn. This turn and the next, next turn. But we shall see. We shall see. All right. There is an Urza's Power Plant and a Main Deck Relic. That is fine. So they'll have Tron next turn, but there's a definitely a decent chance they're just dead next turn. We will see how lucky we get with Winona. If we hit just one Marauders and a Pyromancer, they're dead. So don't draw Marauders, sorry, thank you. Um, we're going to play the Canopy. Because if we uh, hit Season Pyromancer, I'll oh, discard... I'm not sure. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. All right, Winona, and let's spin the wheel. Two triggers. Unless they're playing main deck dismember, in which case I'll be really, really sad. So we can see here how Pyromancer is just everything we basically ever wanted in this deck. Two non creatures. Loots, finds the cards we're looking for. Feeling pretty good. They're just going to crack their map, sure. All right, here we go. Drum roll, please. First one hits Pyromancer and Marauder. So there's your Angry Marauder. Second one hits another Marauder. That's a nice turn three kill to start the video. Must be nice. Just uh, that was our first damage, right? So we dealt 48 damage on turn three. It wasn't really a complicated draw either. We just played our cards. No uh, mulligan to six. Played our cards. Not too shabby, folks. Not too shabby. All right. So we're going to bring in our Avalanche Riders. Um, Thalia is actually pretty good against them too. Not as good on the draw, but uh, could be interested in Thalia. Oh, it's Gaddic Teague too. So let's, uh, let's take a look here and see what we want. Uh, I think Copter can definitely come out in matchups like this where it's all about speed. Um, our Bolts can come out. Our Bolts aren't very good. And our voices aren't very good either. So voice, voice is just like a, it's just a grizzly bear for the most part. Obviously we can get a token off of it with evolution, but it can't attack immediately anyway. So it's not really that big of a deal. Um, so which card are we going to leave in? Or do you want to bring in uh, path or knight? Definitely don't think I want either one of those. Um, so would I prefer to have one voice or one copter? I think one voice. Voice is like the fifth geist, I suppose, if we need to sack for uh, evolution. So... Pretty nice here. We get to bring in a couple like Hate Bear style cards, two Teagues, two Thalias, and of course Avalanche Riders. So we can just try and kill them on turn three again, or, you know, we can slow them down a little bit, hit Avalanche Riders, and so on and so forth. So uh, let's do it. <laughs> well, that's a lot of Avalanche Riders. Um, I don't think we can mulligan this in, even though it's not, doesn't really have a good enabler for Winona. Like, it's just, just double, double Stone Rain, you know? Um, if they, I guess if they have turn three Tron on the play and cast a Karn, we're in, we're in trouble, but we can't really stop that anyway, so we're just going to keep this in. This hand's fun. They kept seven again, and they have a Grab Digger's Cage, sure. So Cage is one of the best cards against us because it stops Winona, but even turning off Winona, I mean, we're still like, you know, a, a fair deck of magic cards. We can just cast our spells and attack, so it's not the end of the world. Um... We'll play Lana Rolls first. In case we draw a green source, we can just attack for one. Um, cage is very good. And Tron typically plays like one cage in their board, so I didn't want to bring in the uh, the Knight of Autumns. Maybe we'll bring him in for game two and three. Double tower? Yeah. So not trying to disparage my opponent here at all. It's very possible that they're just new to the deck. But you mulligan any hand that does not play unique land, unique land, uh, in Tron land. So... They probably just saw the cage and wanted to go for that, but they're probably not going to be fast enough to, to matter here. So we also have enough acceleration that we might just end up casting Angrat's Marauders, which is not like, it's not, 
ideal, but it's not out of the question. You know, it's only seven mana. We we're playing birds and stuff. If the game goes a little longer, you know, so. So we're going to start Avalanche Ridering them. And uh, I think my opponent F6 their turn. Which is funny because I don't even know if I really want to Avalanche Rider in Ursa's Tower. <laughs> um, I kind of think we just play Winona and play Birds of Paradise. Which is silly, but I'm going to assume they F6 their turn. I don't know. Because again, there isn't really much benefit to killing one of the Tron lands if they have both of the same one in play. You know, our goal is to break up Tron and destroying the one they've already preemptively replaced is not really worth it, so... Two mana for a walking blister for one. All right. I mean, if we draw a land, we're going to cast Angrass Marauders. So not exactly by the book, but it plays. Also part of the allure of playing Angrass Marauders and not playing Agent of Treachery. Though I guess we do have two birds in our hand. I mean, two birds in play, so we could cast Agent right now. Most of the time we can't, you know, but um, Angrats Marauders is, is castable, you know, if uh situation calls for it. I didn't even kill one of my, one of my, my things. All right. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What we're going to do is cast Avalanche Riders and kill our opponent. That's what we're going to do. So, Pain costs. We have a dismember here, possibly? Nope, still it's crying. So, uh, opponent is facing lethal here, I believe. 8, 8 is 16, 7, 8, 9, 20. Yeah, it's just uh, lethal on board, but yeah, it's fun. Avalanche Riders, killing your lands, stacking for 20. Even the bird's getting in. All right, so, I mean, I don't even think a good Tron hand beats our draw in game one anyway, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, that's round one. Let's keep going here. Keep it up, you know, just keep this, uh, keep speed going here. Let's try to make this the fastest video of all times. Turn three kill, turn three kill, turn three kill, turn three kill, you know? I'd be all about that. I'd be all about that. Yeah, it, it is somewhat confusing that that Wizards of a Coast just makes the same mistake over and over again. You know, with these uh, Aetherworks Marvel, Winona, Luca, like effects. Um, you know, putting uh, very largely costed things into play for free is, you know, just kind of breaks the game a little bit, you know. So, uh, all right. So we are on the play, and our opponent is playing Lurus of a Dream Den. Could mean a few things. Could be like a fair Jundi deck or a Shadow deck or a Burn deck. But our hand's great, so I don't think we need to even need to think about it. So turn to your Album Master on the play. Awesome. And we have Winona. Awesome. Which would be three triggers unimpeded here. On turn three, which will probably be lethal. All right, Mesa. So it looks like it might be burn, um, which is honestly, I think, probably good for us. Maybe prowess too, I guess. Bolt the bird. All right, sure. Bolt the bird. That works. They have, imp they have impeded our progress. All right, well. Bird's Paradise number two. We are going to need to draw a land here. Um, are going to need to draw a land here. They bolt this bird too. Be rough. Prefer uh, to not have Searing Blaze here. That would be uh, a little devastating. Ouchie, wow. 
All right, so we're going to fetch uh, Temple Garden, which will allow us to cast double green cards on turn two. Any land we draw will be red for uh, uh, Pyromancer anyway, so not the best start here. The good news is they haven't played a threat, which is, you know, the silver lining here. We really want to draw an untapped land, which is all of them, I guess, so. Did it. All right. So not a not a red source for young pyro or seasoned Pyromancer, but still pretty good here because we get to have the extra token. Now, even if they bolt the Rabble Master, still have this one token, which is, that doesn't seem very threatening until it turns into an Angrats Marauders, thanks to Winona. And they should have no main deck way to deal with Winona. Um, so if it hits, it hits, which is great. They're just saying go. Interesting. So draw land? Did not draw land. Uh, okay. I mean, I think we're just going to bolt this Zispear. If they have, like, double spell to keep it alive, we still get to attack with our goblins. The goal is to have goblins in play. That is definitely the goal for, for Winona. So we'll just start here, see what they do. Wow. Almost missed my attack step. That's good, we didn't do that. So we must be, like, four charms and stuff. Can't be Helix, can't be is the creatures that would play them. So they have four cards in hand? It's got to be like just a collection of Boros Charms. No, they're cracking lands. Our opponents are not keeping good hands today. Folks, Modern is not a very uh, forgiving format. You really got to mulligan aggressively. Uh, you got to make sure your hand functions or uh, you just get run over in Modern. All right, hopefully they don't concede because I want to... All right, cool. I want to play this one on All right, don't draw and grab some rotors. Okay. Uh, that's pretty cool. So we get to uh, attack with the birds also. We'll not take any damage, just to play it safe. And uh, let her rip. Birds of Paradise in the red zone. Lethal. Whiff. Pyromancer. All right. Turn five kill. Turn five kill. Ah, oh, they conceded before he counted the damage up. All right. I mean, they, the other hand there was was not too great. So, all right. We bring in Thalia. We bring in Knight of Autumn. And uh, we're going to cut our Copters. Pretty bad against uh, and Lightning Bolt stuff. And Rabble Masters are pretty bad against Bolts and stuff too. So, pretty clean cuts there. Uh, we bring in a great two drop against them and a uh, Knight of Autumn, which can beat hate cards, kill Eidolon, or most importantly, just gain life, which is good. So, and our mana base is, you know, it's not that painful. Um, we have five fast lands in Copper Line Gorge, Razor Virtue Thicket, which is pretty cool. So, imagine their best draws in the play probably still get us, but we can turn three of them. So, when in doubt, turn three your opponent. Okay. Um, Sand's not great. Opponent Mulligan's the six. Um, we do have Evolution for Winona off of a, a voice. We do have a Thalia and pretty pain free mana, which is definitely a start. However, our hands is kind of thin. I mean, Thalia is really good against them, and voice isn't bad either. Given that they mulligan, I'm, I think I'm going to keep. Our hands, are, our lands are also pretty pain-free, which is a pretty big plus. Uh, so we don't have to worry about taking damage off our lands. Um, so I think I'm okay here. This is, the tech. this is everything here. It's Goblin Guide. So, best possible. Also, Goblin Guide does a lot. It does help you in, in, in drawing spells. So, top card, Angrath Marauders. Hilarious. Hilarious. All right. So, we're going to we're gonna Foundry tapped here. Because this, this Heath wants to get a stomping ground. Unfortunately, both of our basics in our hands. We can't fetch a, uh, 
can't fetch a basic with the Heath. So these two are painless. This one isn't, but they play Eidolon here. We're probably in trouble or double one drop. That'd be bad too. Rift Bolt. Okay. That's a Lurus. That's a Rift Bolt. Top card is Winona. Okay. All right. So. We Thalia here, but just Rift Bolt it and pay one. Which is pretty bad. But. If we Voice of Resurgence. We can attempt to block Goblin Guide, which is pretty good. So. I only have two cards left, realistically. And we're effectively at 12 in theory. Um, I think I like voice better. Thalia is just too easy to kill with the Revolt on Suspend. Uh, we can Thalia next turn. And the voice, like, if they bolt the voice, awesome. If they don't bolt the voice, it trades with the Goblin Guy, which is also awesome. So we're going to voice here. Now we've drawn Winona. We don't need to evolution for it. And. It's definitely possible you could just evolution for a, a Knight of Autumn at some point to gain some life too. Bolt targets the voice, sure. So we get our token. They play a Sunbaked Canyon. Three lands in play, two cards in hand. Pretty strange play there, Lightning Helixing, the voice. So even if I jump block, it's only gaining three life. I blocked the Swiss Spear, I guess, or two life, I suppose. And the Helix could have just gone to the face anyway. Kind of a, a, a slightly strange play, but sure. Or 10, another evolution. All right. I mean, Thalia here is definitely pretty solid. Uh, we are not set up to to Winona, which is a part. I guess partly a benefit of killing the uh, the one one, but so two cards in hand. Can they kill my Thalia? They have a core Firewalker. This is a somewhat odd card to sideboarding against us, but I'll allow it. Okay, and that's just pumping the brakes. One card left. We're going to get Stomping Ground. Double green, double red. I suppose Temple Guard would have been okay too, but whatever. Draw a Strangle Root Geist. So, interesting. Um, we could just resolve Winona right now, because Winona is actually a pretty good blocker. Um, our evolution does cost four also. If we just play Stranger Root Geist, I think we just play Winona, because we can always Geist next turn and attack, attack with it immediately. Of course, Winona gums the board up too. We're at a pretty safe nine. Now, if they have Path to Exile, I guess we're out of basics, that, that sucks. So getting a fifth line would have been really nice, but we're actually out of basics, but they can't cast it yet anyway, so uh, we're just going to play Winona. It's more mana efficient. Let's see what they do next. We boarded out the Rabble Master, so couldn't evolution for it. We could evolution for a uh, a Stranger Root Geist. Doesn't really do anything for us though, so. Lava Spike us, so 18 and 2, 6 now. Die is still holding the fort. One out of here also holding the fort. Um, what's our good draw here? I'm not sure. Voice. So awkward mana is awkward. Uh, this mountain's kind of screwing us up a little bit. But...
you probably just want to string root guys. And also, if we draw, oh, that doesn't work. Um, hmm. Yeah, we're just going to guys and fire in. If we hit an Angrath Marauders, awesome. If we hit a Pyromancer, probably even better, honestly. Yeah, I think realistically, we actually we would take Pyromancer over Angrath's Marauders here. All right, so Winona says, well, there's our choice. So Marauders is a 4-4, which gets blocked by Core Firewalker. And then the Geist would either deal 4 damage or get blocked, which is kind of irrelevant. Whereas Pyromancer gives us a bunch of tokens for next turn, um, while also clearing out our hand a little bit. I think Pyromancer is actually just better. Also gives us blockers, too, if we draw a haste creature. Kind of weird to not take Marauders, but I believe it is correct here. Although we are going to lose it to the Undermine is Intractable. So um, trigger this, discard Marauders in Evolution. Draw Bolt Pyromancer. It's not too bad. So free block on the Pyromancer, which is fine. They take two. And now next turn, we get to get a lot of triggers, which is awesome. Um, again, not being able to cast play voice kind of sucks, but they only have one card in and we have a Thalion play, so it's pretty unlikely they kill us next turn. I, I don't think there's actually a, a, a card that could do that. So we'll get a lot of triggers next turn, and we're probably going to point this bolt at, uh, at something to clear the way a little bit. All right, Lava Spike targeting us. So they can't play a land and play a spell because they only have one card in, so, um, I think we're going to just... Bolt Swift Spear. Um, we're getting three triggers next turn. Oh, we could actually evolution for another Geist, which would give us a fourth trigger, which I kind of like, actually. That's kind of a nice play next turn. Um, let's clear a blocker out of the way, I think. It's also a potential attacker, too, so. We're definitely not casting this next turn, so. Just kill this now. So untap, draw not Angrath's Marauders. We're at three. We do need to make some progress this turn. So I guess we could actually also just evolution for a gain four life. Maybe that's actually just much safer. So we can evolution here for a Geist and we get we have four triggers off Winona. But it's not guaranteed to win the game. Um, and then just ditch drop Bolt and kill us. So... Safer play might just be to sacrifice Geist and get um, a Knight of Autumn to gain four life. And then we're at seven and no one card can kill us from seven. I actually like that better. So this is a slightly less explosive but safer play. Let's evolution away the Stranger with Geist. Ooh, actually, I should, I should sacrifice the Pyromancer. That was stupid. But yeah, I, I, that's, that's, I, I screwed up. All right, I was locked in on getting it, on sacrificing this. I like I should stack Pyromancer there, so I'd have an extra. I know I wouldn't. Yeah, I just, I just don't need the Pyromancer in play, but I don't think it matters that much. It's the same basic idea. We have an extra attacker now, I guess. But all right, and uh, we have a Marauder on the bottom of our deck, so we could shuffle. Um, that does, does put us to six. I do think it is unlikely of them to kill us. From six or seven. But this helps to kill them. Eh, I don't think we do it, actually. Let me just attack. We're playing it like super, super safe. I think we're really, really ahead, so. And we'll send in um I guess just everything. So we're gonna have blockers off of one oh so we want to totally whiffs. And we still have one blocker anyway. Alright, so we have three triggers. First, it's Winona, so it's awkward, but sure. Second one, it's Thalia or Season Pyromancer. Oh, we have a Thalia, so we get Season Pyromancer. Discard our hand. And then we get Marauders. Perfect. 
I guess Marauders, all Marauders would be perfect, but this is pretty good here, so. That'll block the two four fours, take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, fifty is the other step. Cool. All right, two and oh. You like to see it. You like to see it. All right, round three. Um Sounds like a little mopey, but we draw any one on it or evolution, it's insane. And especially evolution. And basically drawing any other spells is also good. And we're still just like playing reasonable cards too, so we're gonna keep this. Like both Strangle Root Guys and Voice of Resurgence are a little below the bar in modern, but they're not that far far below the bar, honestly. They're both pretty reasonable cards. Very good answer rule as well. So Alright, so let's Lanawar Elf here. Also, they bolt our Elf. We have many plenty of plays, too, so... Yeah, Evolution will be a huge draw. Just naturally drawing Winona, also fun. Maybe we could, like, not draw, uh... Angrats Marauders, as usual. It's our usual, uh, thing we're looking for. Heath Breeding Pool. Interesting. Seer Visions. Okay. I'm interested, I guess. One top, one bottom. Mishus Bobble. Alright, it's probably a uh, an Emery deck of some kind. Maybe they'll miss their trigger. Alright. Ooh, that was a good draw. Okay. Um... I think we're just going to Strangle Root Geist. Like, they do probably have counter spells in their deck, but we don't have to go for it next turn. But we can if we want to, so... This gives us the option. Also, it's not entirely clear what we're playing yet. Looks like we're just playing some sort of, like, weird beatdown deck. If we're unfamiliar with our, with our deck. This deck's kind of been floating around a little bit, but... Still relatively new. Sacred Foundry. Untapped. Alright, now we're officially off the rails. Uh, Serum Missions, Mishus Bobble, Breeding Pool, Sacred Foundry. Okay. I would say that we're... Uh, confused. Intrigued. Interested. Interested. Color me interested. Serum Visions. So I'd say we're definitely not going for it in the face of a, a foundry with possible path. They go bottom, top. Okay. All right. Strange stuff going on here. I don't really know what's happening. Smuggler's Copter. All right. I think the first thing we're going to do is play Voice of Resurgence. Um... Try to get a better idea of what's going on. So they should obviously react to this if they want to cast spells. Snap resolves, okay. Um, and I think we're gonna play Smuggler's Copter. Um, we could play the Geist. There are 12 already too, geez. This copter's better for next turn. Kind of not, though. I'll just play the Geist, I think. I mean, like, we're kind of just killing them, which is also part of the benefit, too. This is one of those, like, combo decks that can also just win games of Magic fairly. Um, you know, it is turn three and they're at eight. They have helped out, of course, with a few fetches and shocks, but we're kind of just beaten down. You know, not the most exciting beatdown creatures, but... I mean, next turn we could we could one hundred percent kill them if they tap out with uh, evolution. So, pyretic ritual. Uh they probably have the song of creation deck, maybe. Manamorphose. Well, they better kill us this turn because uh, they real dead next turn. All right. Some sort of storm deck.
Interesting. The plot thickens. Summoner's Pact for Wild Cantor. I'm thinking Song Creation. That's what I'm thinking. But who knows? I, I, I would be really impressed if we died here. I don't know what is happening. They haven't played, they haven't played a land yet, so... Alright, there's Song Creation. Explosives on zero. Uh, they can play two extra lands. There's one. Uh, repeal the explosives. Oh boy. Alright, well, uh, I think we're probably dead, if I had to guess. Kind of stinks we didn't go for it. I just didn't know what they were doing. And it seemed prudent to just like... Our play, with our other play, aside from going for it, was pretty good. And... Maybe I should have just gone for it. I mean, we could have had a turn three kill. Which clearly at this point was probably necessary because they're kill they're killing us on turn three, so I'm not sure why they print cards like this. Like the only thing this card's ever gonna do is stuff like this, you know? Underworld breach. <laughs> Take everything I just said about this card and apply it to this card. So I imagine we're dead now. I mean, they can just infinitely play Cantors and stuff. As Cantors don't gen, I don't know what. I'm just gonna sit here and and maybe I'll go play Minesweeper or something like that. Summoner's Pack for Cantor is pretty cute with uh, Song Creation. So they have the ability to play their graveyard, but no mana floating. They screw up. Because I don't see any mana floating. Summoner's Pact. Draw two. You need to draw more Spirit Guides, right? And they've already used two. Because I don't see how they're casting this ritual. Summoner's back, sure. Another wild cantor, sure. And they do have 16 cards in their hand, so. Sack for a mana, sure. Play another one, sure. They found a spirit guide, now we're dead. I guess I could have just like kept like cycling through their wild cantors with Underworld Breach until they found it, but So yeah, I guess we should have just gone for it. I guess we'll look at our top uh our top uh few cards. So we could have uh we instead of playing voice and geist, we could have just played evolution on geist and attack for two one limit triggers. Which is not like, definitely not a guaranteed turn three kill, but you know, it's definitely reasonably possible we could kill on turn three with that. Um, but we didn't know what they were doing. That Sacred Foundry threw, threw me for a loop, you know? So we'll get to bring in Rest in Peace. Maybe you don't want, maybe recipes is not necessary. I don't know. Bring Thalia, bring Gaddock Teague. Um, All right, we're dead. Wow, so they killed us on turn three. That is, uh, I guess we shuffled, but there's a Marauder and a Marauder. Yeah, so we, we, we would have, I guess we, we shuffled, I guess, so we would actually know. But all right, well, uh, 
being going rogue does have its advantages. We had no idea what they were doing, and they were able to uh, to punish us for it in a spot where we might have been able to kill them on turn three. We decided to play it safe, and uh, that seemed pretty wrong. So support out our bolts and our copters and some number of voices. We're going to bring in uh, Rest in Peace, Thalia, Gaddic Teague, and then... Uh, Do you want some avalanche riders too? It's not like exactly what we're looking for. I don't, I don't think you want Night of Autumn. Um, I doubt we'll be able to to kill the song. So you just kill us to turn to play song. I think you want some avalanche riders. We could shave like one more mediocre card. Maybe shave the Cavern of Souls because they're just never going to kill my Lana Elves and stuff. So our mana should be pretty safe. I'm happy with that. Okay, so still have our fast combo. Now have some pretty good elements of disruption, which is good. So I imagine they would struggle to beat a Thalia or a Gaddock that you can play. Ooh, okay, Mulligan. All right, that's uh, significantly better. So we're going to keep this, and I think we're going to dump the evolution. So we already have Winona, and this doesn't seem necessary. We are gold fishing here, but we're on the play. Worst case, we can just avalanche riders, riders them on turn three to slow them down. Um, so I think this is pretty fine. Opponent keeps seven. Steam Vents, Untapped, Wild Cantor. Seasoned Pyromancer. Um, I think we're going to cast the Pyromancer and discard the Riders and the Atlanta Elves and just go for a turn three, Winona. Um, remember, Winona can hit Thalia or Avalanche Riders to disrupt them. And... Yeah, that just seems much better than any other, any, other, any other option here. So we draw land, but it can be any of our lands. Didn't draw land. I drew a Geist and a Birds, which is not ideal. So now we need to draw any land or Rest in Peace, Teague, Thalia, that's it. Any land, rest in peace, Teague, Thalia. I was like, on turn two, which I mean, if that happens, I'm going to call what Wizards of the Coast and start complaining about, uh, about song creation. Old Wild Cantor. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Well, this is completely unreasonable. Uh, okay, we're going to get turn two. Everyone, please use this time to uh, fire up a notepad and write yourself uh, a little letter to, to Wizards of the Coast, uh, asking them to explain themselves as to why they would print this card. And Underworld Breach. Make sure Underworld Breach is in there, too. Um, because this is pretty stupid. They profess to not like Storm Combo. And they've, said, they've said they will never reprint Storm. Storm's the you know bad mechanic, badly designed, big mistake, and uh, here we are, turn two. Let's try and play a long game modern with their brand new mythic rare, and uh, 
This pause makes me hope that they bricked. Um, in which case, we probably wouldn't need to hit a land because they just die of the pact, but we'll see what happens. All right, Cantor, sure. Maybe, maybe they didn't brick, I guess. I, I, I don't even know. Who pays attention anyway, you know? Metamorphos. Drawing three, effectively. Seven cards in hand. Two men in the pool. Play Metamorphos. Drawing three. I'd imagine we are probably dead. I guess they have to, like, actually draw the card Song of Creation. They haven't really shown us a way to find it, aside from Serum Vision, so that's unfortunate for us, I guess, but I, I don't know. All right, well, uh, that was uh, not a very fun match. Okay, we're dead. I mean, I don't think we can mulligan that hand. Like, we can't expect to die on turn two, I don't think. I, I mean, maybe this is a turn two deck unimpo un unimpeded. I just don't know that. But it does stink that we have multiple good um, multiple good hate cards in our deck. And Rest in Peace, and Thalia, and Teague. And, uh, you know, we still just lost. I can't, I can't draw my card. I can't see my next card. All right. So we don't even know if we were drawing a land or not. I mean, any land, Teague, Thalia, or Rest in Peace was good next turn. So it's like, well, probably half our deck. So that kind of stinks. Um... Definitely not the funnest match of all time, but I guess we'll just keep playing, so. All right. Song of Creation. Turn two kills. I thought our turn three kills were good, you know? Probably would have had him in game one in turn three if we uh, we knew it was going on, but that Sacred Foundry uh, threw me for a loop. The Bobble threw me for a loop, too. You know, Bobble is usually played in more fair decks, I guess. Maybe not. I don't know. When they went Breeding Bull Bobble, I just was like, okay, they're playing, they're playing, you know, Euro something, whatever, Emery. Was not the case. Was not the case. Unfortunately, our next opponent wasn't ready yet because they didn't expect our match to go so quickly. So, you know, they're getting, they're getting, they're getting lunch right now in the, uh, in the food court and they'll be back shortly, hopefully. Oh, there they are. Hope they got something good. All right, so round four. What even die roll? Going first. Cavern of Souls, Cavern of Souls, Cavern of Souls. Uh, fortunately, I mean, if, if we're feeling bold, we can keep this out. We can go Souls on Elf, play Elf. Next turn, play Copter and try and work our way through it. But the, the one of Cavern of Souls is mostly there. It's just like a hedge in longer matchups against counter spells to resolve Winona. But certainly, it has the ability to screw you, as we're seeing here. But given that we have a, a mulligan in our hand anyway, we obviously discard the copter, but we're just going to mulligan this hand. We don't need to be uh, to be greedy. Uh, oh my god, this hand's terrible. Uh, this hand is a lot worse, so I guess we're going to mulligan again. <laughs> um, obviously, we pitch marauders, but we don't have any creatures at all. So, yeah, we're going to mulligan again. Okay, this is a lot better. So, ship marauders and one of our striker root guys. We gotta make our land drops for for Winona. So, definitely not the best hand ever, uh, but it's a it's a five card and it's functional. Wooded foothills. I mean, don't thought seize me. All right, basic forest, arbor elf. Ugh. Uh, the card Blood Moon is actually really good against us. I guess Pyramid's not bad against Blood Moon, but... Alright. Uh... Here's Schneiger Geist. No planes in our deck, so no way to cast Winona if they play a Blood Moon next turn. Unfortunately. Okay. I think they could still have Utopia Sprawl on red. For like the Stone Cold Nuts. Ugh. 
All right. I mean, just don't play Blood Moon, please. Modern's fun. You know, modern's a good time. They just have like eight mana next turn, too. Oh, man. All right. I mean... It's funny because if they didn't play the second Arbor Elf, our Bolt, like, actually, is actually pretty constricting. But they have actual seven... They have actual eight mana next turn on turn... Uh, on turn... Eight mana on turn three. So, like, Bolting and Arbor Elf doesn't really help. They'll just have five mana instead. Possibly six. So, I think we don't even bother and just play Pyromancer. I'm just try and hope their hand is, is bad otherwise, because we can't really do anything. So... Modern. It's fun cheesing people out. It's not fun when you, you get cheesed out. Could be an argument for a basic planes in the deck. It's not great. Doesn't cast Dragon Root Geist. Doesn't cast Season Pyromancer. But Blood Moon is obviously pretty annoying. We actually just like can't. We do have Birds and Elves. Birds and Elves, I guess. So that can help a little bit as far as like casting Evolution to get uh, an item on them or just getting one on and killing them. But Right, well, they're really in the tank here, so I mean, maybe they just don't have a threat. That'd be cool. Or they'll tap five mana, whatever, sure. So unfortunately, the, uh, the the other possible case of they're deciding which threat to play could be the case, which means we're probably just dead. So, but whatever it is, they'll make sure to take a long time doing it. I want to remind everyone, you can uh, get 5% off your order on CoolStuffInc.com using promo code JIM5. JIM5, 5% off your order, and a free Jim Davis Goblin token with every order using the promo code. Also, if you're looking to sell cards, you know, not not the greatest time in the world right now as far as, uh, as money goes. Looking to make some money and sell some Magic cards. Cool Stuff offers a service where you can video chat with them to sell your cards. So... Just like selling cards at a dealer booth at a Grand Prix, you get to talk with a real person, lay some cards out, and show what you got. And um, pretty cool service from CoolStuffInc.com. Not going to lie. Uh, creative service, too. Yeah, not guessing that one. Uh, so sell your cards. CoolStuffInc.com. And I believe it's a 35% trade-in bonus right now, but don't quote me on that. Might be 25 They have Long Crusher Giant too. No? Yes, maybe. Sure. So they have basically everything you could ever want. Uh, I don't think it's. I guess that we could like draw land, like Flashback Pyromancer. And if they have nothing else, maybe we can win. But. I would say also just drawing Pyromancer would be good too. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. And having having season Pyromancer in your deck against Blood Moon is pretty sweet. Because they can always push away the cards that you uh you can't cast. It's four power, three bodies. Yeah. 
Oh, we get it. We understand. We know how this works. Okay. I mean, this is going to die to a, uh, a glory banger activation, but it forces an exert. Oh, we're actually in this game too. So that's the funny part. We could draw like Pyromancer next turn, then just draw like a bolt off the Pyromancer. Really? Well, they still screwed up. I mean, they let us go to combat, so. Small victories, I suppose. Didn't set the stops right. With this God of Destiny. All right. So it looks like we're dead here. It looks like the uh, the old turn to Blood Moon is uh, going to do us in. Let the record show that we were in this game. Uh, you know, if they had bricked a little bit more, we definitely could have taken this one down, which is kind of ridiculous, but sure. So good old Blood Moon making us have fun, play magic. Um, again, this is kind of up for us. You know, we don't really have... Uh, don't really have a lot of ways to work around Blood Moon. I think we're going to cut our voices just because they are hard to cast under Blood Moon. And um, we only have a basic forest to get. So we just can't play white spells. Try and lessen the impact a little bit. And then I might just bring in the Avalanche Riders. The problem with Night of Autumn is that like... Even I, I don't. It'd be very hard to cast Night of Autumn to to kill a Blood Moon. And if we can cast Night of Autumn, we can cast everything else anyway. So we have green and white mana. So I'm gonna bring in Avalanche Riders. Just try and cheese them out a little bit. I think we can cast a lot of our deck. You know, we did we did draw. You know, we drew like Elf Bird, Elf Bird, Swing or whatever. We can cast a pretty big, pretty 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 big portion of our deck to put the Blood Moon in play. Copter as well. I mean, I'm all gonna five that game. So all things considered, this probably shouldn't be that bad for us. Pretty risky. Um, you can't keep this end. All right, we're in a mulligan. It's bolt our elf. We never cast a spell. All right, this is significantly better. Uh, so we're gonna keep this. Uh, we're gonna ship the the mountain because LOL Blood Moon, and we're gonna fetch a basic forest off of our heath. So cast the spells. And we'll put the Gorge on tap first to bluff Lightning Bolt, so they might decide to play Sprawl over Arbor Elf. Should definitely be in our benefit. Hmm, or not, whatever. All right, so we have to, that's, that's, that's actually a really good draw. All right, so we're pretty live now for, uh, for getting Blood Mooned. All right, so... We can cast all of our spells through Blood Moon currently, which is nice. It's funny, Blood Moon would actually manifest us to be able to cast Season Pyromancer, which is kind of hilarious. And if we can cast our spells, I think we're just a, you know, a better version of their deck. So, you know, we our, our mid-rangey game plan is a lot better than theirs. So we have one to go over the top. So here it comes. Cloyth is God of Destiny. All right. So let's draw one on a rider next turn. Can we do that? So that would be cool. Now I got a lot to deal with. Suppose a glory bringer would be the, the frustrating card this turn that would kill the goblin while also attacking us and putting a big threat in play. But it wouldn't be the end of the world, honestly. I 
And we're still dragging to four copies of Unknown and four copies of Evolution. So. Right, looks like they got it. So they exert and kill Rob Master, and we draw Evolution or um, Evolution or Winona. Or another Rabble Master. Uh, Avalanche Riders isn't even appealing because they would just get the land off Cloythus anyway, so pretty sure we're just playing Rabble Master here. And they are, you know, they are at nine. They're going to gain two life on their turn, but. This also forces them to deal with the Rabble Master again. It's pretty good, so. 7 to 13. Sure. That Avalanche Rider looking a little better now. Suppose Clithus turning on is an issue here too. Renin six. Uh, okay. Sure. I really, really want to draw draw one on the next turn. Really. Alright, um, discarding Bloodbraid Elf, Chandra. <sighs> All right. Big draw step. Huge draw step. Monumental draw step. Alright. Uh, I would guess we're probably dead. Unless we can find a, a real miracle off the top here. So now we're going to lose a lot of stuff. Uh, I guess we're going to Pyromancer. Make a blocker. Draw two cards play birds and so on and so forth, but it does seem like it is going to be pretty difficult to win uh, all my goblins to attack too. Ugh. So we lose both goblin tokens. All right, I mean, even if we draw one on our next turn, I don't even think it matters anymore, unfortunately. We'll see, maybe, but. Bolt Llanowar Elves. No dice so far, no dice. Looking for a big draw step. And to, you know, also not die. Ten to nine off the Cloyd's activation. Still have two cards in hand. Kind of a stinky match. Um, game one, we could cheese that by Blood Moon. Game two, we just can't find our our, our marquee cards. It's Evolution or Winona. More stuff coming. Blood Brain Elf. Perfect. 
Lightning bolt. Perfect. All right. Well, okay, I guess. Uh, I don't even know if we can survive this turn anymore. So I don't even think so. Any day nap on it, please put me out of my misery. All right, yeah, what do you, what do you, uh, what's up, opponent? Pose deck is good. I've played it before. Uh, does look like a cube draft deck though. Really, you know, just like a bunch of like just cool cards, basically. All right, coming in, leaving some things back, kill my stuff. You got it. Makes our blocks kind of gross. We're taking some damage, blocking a four, taking four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and going to one. And they have three blockers back. I don't. I couldn't even conceive a, a sequence of events where we win this game. I like the perfect, even the perfect went on the hit, so I don't even think it matter. Because they just have uh, enough blockers to survive everything. You might have bolt too. I don't think it matters. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so we got to beat four blockers, or three blockers, sorry. All right, yeah, so definitely kind of a stinky one. Um, the Blood Moon game really stinks, just getting cheesed out by Blood Moon, but... All right, so pretty explosive start, and then uh, last two matches have been kind of eh. You know, definitely, definitely it's not, feel, not felt awesome. Uh, getting Storm killed on turn three and turn two, and then... Uh, and then getting cheesed out by Blood Moon. And then just kind of like, they just kind of had a pretty good hand that game. Um, and we just couldn't find any of our marquee cards. So kind of stinky, but that's okay. Let's win this last match nice and quick and efficiently. And uh, deck's definitely super sweet. You can see how explosive it is. And we've only lost to, you know, some cheesy stuff. And then, uh, you know, being comboed or ridiculously fast. And the, the, the Storm, the combo matchup, I think that they probably don't go off on turn two that often. And the game one, if we knew a little better what was going on, if I had just gone for it on turn three, we probably just killed him on turn three. And then in the post board games, we can just draw one of our Thalia, rest in peace, or organic Teague, or probably a pretty good chance to win also. Or if we're not turn two, uh, because we were, we were going to turn three that game. So it doesn't feel too bad. You know, deck's definitely performing really well. Um, And that's a hand. Definitely a hand. Gonna keep that one. We like it. Got Winona and the Evolution. Possible turn three kill here. Turn on birds, turn two geist, turn three land. Evolution the geist. Attack, attack, attack with the birds and the geist. So. One mulligan six. And basic island. Go. Okay. Um I'm gonna shock in Temple Garden. I wanna have the white in play. If I draw a red land, I'm gonna try to play it next turn. Forest. I think it doesn't really matter. I don't know. I'm not sure. Seems six of one, half a dozen of the other, but. Bird's Paradise. Into your island. Not a snow covered island, mind you, a regular island. 
and a plains. And an invisible stalker. Alrighty then. Alright, well. Ooh. Ooh, that's even better. Okay, let's just do that. So now we have a rabble master instead. And with an Ona already in our hand, this is gonna make for a lot of attackers next turn. Invisible Stalker. Some sort of like blue white boggles deck. Seen that float around a little bit. They put like the curious obsession enchantments and stuff. Speak of a devil. They have Coronet too. Because I'm pretty sure we'll kill them. Oh wait, is, is it get Vigilance too? It does. Okay, that could be a problem. Uh alrighty then. Um I mean we have Winona for three attackers here. And they're at 22. Uh, I mean, the Goblin Tokens have to attack and they will gain life off of it. Yeah, we just gotta just go for it. I mean, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see how we can't go for it here. Get our mountain. Not a bad opening from our opponent. All right. Let's, so we're going to lose our, our Rabble Master Trade first strike, and they're going to be at 27. So not sure if we can deal 27 with the uh, the extra things we get off Winona, but we'll see what we can do. We also have a lot of attackers next turn also, so they would need to deal with Winona. And if they do deal with Winona, we can still Geist and Evolution in the same turn. So, all right, coming in. Three triggers. First trigger. Definitely need some Marauders here. Pyromancer's not bad. Um, we ditch. Definitely birds. Probably just land. Land Rabble Master, okay. Next one is Pyromancer or another Winona. Well, this Winona is attacking. Um, and the blockers from Pyromancer don't really matter, I guess. I guess we would pitch Rabble Master. I guess there are extra triggers for the thingy next turn. The problem is that they have a path in their hand, we just can't win. So they can just path our attack step next turn. It's also possible they just go like double Ethereal Armor and just kill us, kill us next turn, but. I think I like Winona here. It gives us the best shot to win if we uh, if we hit a Marauder on our third one. So do that. Keep this one. Big money on the third trigger. Wow. 18 cards and not a single Anger Ads Marauders and a whiff. All right. So they block this. They take four, five, six, seven, eight. Take three total. They'll be at 19. And we do have a lot of attackers next turn that are non-human, but they have to not have a path to exile. All right. Pretty depressing turn three there. Um, 18 cards, no more Angrath's Marauder. Spirit Dancer, that's a good start. Just don't path me, basically. Ethereal Armor targeting that, sure. No path, no second armor. Oh, I definitely have path. It's a sad day. And it stinks because we can't even um we can't even like play the other one in our hand. Oh man, brutal. Alright, um I mean we're just gonna attempt to put the highest amount of 
attackers in play as possible. So we'll just play this and not take any. I don't think taking damage actually matters at all. I don't want to shuffle because there's no marauders at the bottom of my deck. So and we'll just name Spirit, I guess. Play guys, play Rabble Master, move to combat, get path to concede the game. So our, our game plan here. Yeah. All right. These these games today have been uh, have been wild on both sides. All right. I mean, pretty cool, I guess. Let's bring in uh, Thalia. Bring in our Knight of Autumns. And that's it. Let's cut the, the copters. Flood the bolts. The bolt can kill Core Spirit Dancer, but I don't think I care about Core Spirit Dancer. So we're just going to kill it. It stinks because the, the we can't really stop a path. Path is like one of the best cards against us because it kills one. Well, obviously, it's for so cheap. Um, we can't really stop it. Um, Thalia can help a little bit. Voice helps a bit too, but we gotta shave one more card. I guess probably a copter. Just awkward with Thalia. Try this. All right, on the play. I guess we were on the draw that game too. On the play, we win that game easily, right? Yeah. So all right. All right. Uh, sand's really good. I guess we can't actually cast Pyromancer on turn two. That's awkward, but. I want to keep seven, sure. So best draw red source for the next turn. We have to, if we have to just play voice and attack for one, that's not the worst either. And then any land gives us Winona, so. Stomping ground, land or else. Say go. Horizon Canopy? There's no way they're banned, right? Slipper, there's no way they're banned. They only have blue white lands last game is no way. So they just they're just like they're just playing this as a canopy land, and then they're just obviously playing Boggles Blue. Alright, didn't draw the red land. We drew a smuggler's copter. Uh that's kinda interesting. Is that better than Voice of Resurgence? Interesting indeed. Um, certainly worse against path. It could also help us find lands too, though, if we miss a land next turn. I think we're playing the copter. I'm gonna attack for one. Blue white, staggering insight. So, plus and plus one, and the curiosity ability and lifelink, which is definitely fine. But all right, we'd love to draw land here. Obviously, any land will do. That doesn't work at all. Okay. Um, so, huh. I guess we play Strangerroot Geist, Kruk Opter, and it's Ack. So we can evolution the, the Geist next turn. Um, I mean, the, the Bongo is blockable too, I suppose. It sucks not drawing a land there. Um, 
it's funny because if I had played the Geist, we would have the, the you know, the, the we're not attacking this turn. Uh, I brought Knight of Autumn, right? So I can also just go get Knight of Autumn. That would not be really good, I don't think. Uh, all right. Let's... I guess we're just going to Strangle Root Geist and Crew Copter attack for five and see what we draw and go from there. Have to assume that blocking this Boggle is impossible next turn. They'll play Coronet or whatever. Well, there's our land. Um, what do we pitch? Probably Pyromancer. All right, I mean... Don't really have great capacity to play around Path to Exile here. Um, we are beating down, but all right, there's Coronet. So I guess if they have Coronet land with Path up, we're probably pretty in in, in trouble. Maybe I should have kept the Pyromancer. They're just blockers because they don't currently have evasion of any kind. Ooh, no land. Okay, I think we're golden here. Another Winona. Um, I think we actually just evolution. We can actually, this is actually great. That doesn't matter either way, I guess. But um, we can crew copter, then evolution the Geist and have three attackers and three triggers. Other option is we could just evolution the Geist for a Knight of Autumn, killing the Insight, which also kills the Coronet. And then attack for a pretty good amount and still have it on an next turn. That also is actually pretty appealing. There's a chance they have Forcification in their deck, but whatever. Um, I can't imagine they would leave that in against us. I guess the counter is Evolution, but they didn't see that game one. Um, if we just cast Winona, we have a Copter attack and a Geist attack, which isn't great. Yeah, I think we're just going to go for the Evolution here. So let's Crew Copter. Uh, I don't think our elf's getting in, honestly. I'm just going to tap the elves and not take a damage. And we're going to evolution and pray for no force negation. Probably have force negation in their deck. I shall not have it in, their, in, the, in the deck sideboard, post board. Oh. That's unreal. All right. I mean, I guess I'm an idiot. I mean, I, I literally talked about it, and we couldn't beat it if they had it. Maybe we should just play Winona. We only would have gotten in for two attacks, and then they could have eaten one. But, ugh, God. Just punish it every turn. Discarding Winona says we have Winona. Oh, man. That sucks. It's the only spell on our entire deck. It's a really important one. Like, I don't really begrudge them for leaving in Force Negation, but... <sighs> Arcane Flight. Taken to the skies. Finish it off with the Ethereal Armor to kill us, please, and punish us. Oh, man. They're not. What? They must have misclicked. That's vigilance. Doesn't make any sense. All right. Maybe I should discard this. They obviously have path now. 
I am playing terribly. Uh, as f I think I played these last few turns really, really badly. Um, They have path, we're just like dead either way because they'll just kill our cop. They have a flyer. I don't know why they didn't attack last turn. Like, it doesn't make any sense. They must have just misclicked. Um, we lose the path. I'm just casting one on it. We lose the path either way, so whatever. They definitely have it, but they can just path the copter if we try and block. And they have any aura, we just die. So, not a happy, happy man here, but. All right. First trigger. Marauders, okay. Second trigger. We getting bailed out here? Ugh, I spoke too soon. All right, so. Loot. Discard. I doubt Pyromancer will matter. All right. Uh, I mean, we're still dead to literally any effect that can pump. This is eight. I don't know, fifth. Again, they're at 18. They go to like two or something. Wait, what? 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 <laughs> Excuse me? Why didn't this kill the Wanana? Alright. Sure. I I don't understand what's going on, folks. I got I got nothing for you. Not a thing. No idea. I couldn't tell you. Hey, playing that force negation was so stupid. Well, That pumps power, yeah. All right. Uh, I think I played that game really badly, but definitely a really roller coaster of a league. I mean, from 2 0 and literally destroying people to 2 3 and getting like turn 2 comboed, Blood Mooned, realistically, the blue white Boggles matchup, if that's even like, you know, a, a more established deck, doesn't seem very good for us. I mean, they have Force for Revolution, they have Path for Winona, they have a fast clock. Um, but we still probably should have been fine if I just played Winona and didn't play the stupid evolution into the force. But yeah, I mean, obviously it feels, it seems dumb for me to be like, this deck went two, three, it's really good. You should play it. But that's definitely awesome. Um, it's very clear the power of the deck, uh, in those earlier games. Um, and sometimes in modern, no matter how good your deck is, you just get, you just get pooped on by some stuff, but deck's super cool. Um, I think it's very, very powerful. If you like, if you like creature combo decks, like beat down decks, uh, the deck is really powerful, honestly. And the good thing is that even when your opponent has good answers to Winona, you can still grind super well. You know, you get Pyromancers and, and Smuggler's Copters, Lightning Bolts and stuff, which is awesome. Um, the sideboard's quite good. Deck's sweet. I'm kind of sad, honestly. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But deck's super sweet. Give it, give it a spin. Uh, Winona is uh, not just for standard. Not just for standard, that is for sure. So I am a, a somewhat sad Jim Davis for CoolStuffInks.com. Uh, thank you for watching so much. Of course, there's always a companion article to every video I do on CoolStuffInks.com proper. Check that out. I do a video article every Monday, a written article every Friday. And um, go to CoolStuffInks.com for all your card needs. Cards, boards, video games. I mean, I mean uh, board games. Uh, all gaming on there. CoolStuffInks.com. Promo code Jim5. 5% off your order. And I'll see you fine folks next week. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim Davis for CoolStuffInc.com.